In days before television, there was vaudeville. And those live stage performances enabled many, many actors and actresses really to refine and perfect their craft. But there was a little trick of the trade in vaudeville because audiences sometimes were hostile. And so to prevent, at the end of the show, there being silence or even booing, they would arrange for these big-time, show-stopping, big production numbers to finish off to ensure applause when they left the stage. Eddie Leonard was one of the finest. And this was his trick of the trade. He would announce that this was his last show. And he would get a round of applause. But the trick worked. He said that every show for 20 years and got applause every time. This Feast of the Ascension is Jesus' final curtain call as he goes back to heaven to be seated at his Father's right hand. But Jesus didn't have to resort to gimmicks. His audience, his disciples, hung on every word. And he tells them and us today, as he's getting ready to ascend to heaven, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the world. You are my witnesses. Jesus left this earth with some of his work not yet finished. And he put the responsibility for that work in our hands. And we are to be his witnesses, every single one of us, to the ends of the earth and right here in town. That is a big responsibility. But he gives us the grace to do it. The poet Tennyson talks about four qualities of the medieval knight. A knight was to live purely. A knight was always to tell the truth. A knight was to right wrongs. And a knight was always to follow the king. As disciples of Jesus, that describes our mission too. To live lives that are pure and holy. To tell the truth to the world about him and make his message known to the ends of the earth. To right the wrongs that are found in our society. And always, always to follow Christ our King. That is our mission as disciples of Jesus Christ. This weekend is the fourth of our ministry's fairs, giving us an opportunity to look over what is the Lord calling me to do for the next 12 months. Next Sunday is Commitment Sunday, where we will return our commitments by way of cards right here at church. You've received them in the mail. There are more on the white table right by the bulletin board. And this year, we also have a special commitment card for our young people. What is the Lord asking us to do? We return these cards next weekend, and what a great background for Commitment Sunday. The Feast of Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the day we honor our mothers for their commitment and love. But making a commitment to the Lord with our time, our talent, our treasure can sometimes cause us to be a little fearful. Maybe afraid of the challenge itself, 
maybe afraid of failure, maybe even afraid of some changes we need to make in our lives to fulfill those commitments. Our attitudes can be either yes but or yes and. When opportunities come our way, we can say, oh yes, that's a wonderful idea, but these are the reasons I can't do it. Yes, I see the importance of that, but I'm not able. Yes, but. The other approach is yes and. Yes, and what else can I do? Yes.